Luton Town has been promoted to the Premier League. This continues their meteoric rise up the English footballing pyramid, going from non-league to the Premier League over the past decade. A real life road to glory. But many people, myself included, think they don't have what it takes to stay up in the Premier League next season. Which is why we are taking over Luton Town and conducting a realistic rebuild. And this is the default starting 11 we are left with. Let's be honest, this team is not surviving relegation. We've got some serious work to do. Let's get to it. So I have scoured the internet, scoured every corner of it to find every transfer rumor that has been connected to Luton Town as of the day of recording, which is June 19th. And yeah, there's not some great players here, but there's some stuff for us to work with. Realism might end up hurting us. He was one of the heroes in Luton Town's promotion campaign. It is marvelous Nakamba. He was only on loan last season, but now we are permanently bringing him to Luton Town from Aston Villa. And we have picked him up on a bargain price of 3.5 million pounds. This right here is a signing that they have not only been linked with, but I think Luton Town should 100% go in for. It is Kiernan Dewsbury Hall from relegated Leicester, 16.7 million pounds to get a quality midfielder in here. This man needs to be a key part of a survival campaign. I certainly did raise an eyebrow when I saw how strongly Luton Town were linked with Andre Ayew, but it makes sense for this year. We need somebody that's going to get us goals this year and keep us up. Andre Ayew hopefully is going to be that man. Another player that was key in Luton Town's Premier League promotion is Cody Drame. We needed a new right wing back. Let's get the youngster back to Luton Town and give him a shot in the top flight. Luton Town have been linked with so many goalkeepers. But in my opinion, out of all the keepers they were linked with, this one makes the most sense from a FIFA standpoint. Mark Travers, young and in terms of overall, he was the second highest overall. 23 years of age compared to players that were 28, 29. We're going to welcome the Irishman from Bournemouth. The signing spree continues, and this is for a much needed upgrade to the back line. It is Jamal Lascelles. He has fallen out of favor at St. James's Park, but I think he can still do a job in the Prem, which is why we're bringing him here to Luton. We've had all these player signings. It's about time we had a departure. It's Amari Bell who is headed to the French League. We're also going to have a loan move here for the young midfielder, Louis Watson. The loan moves for young attacking midfielders continue as we are sending John McAtee off on loan. This is a really nice moment because if I have my facts correct, James Justin came up through Luton Town's Youth Academy and now we're bringing him back to the club and now that they are in the big time, James Justin, who is signed for 9.1 million pounds. Welcome to the Hatters. We have gone on an absolute spree so far this season, but again, I just don't know if this team is good enough to survive in the Premier League. We're going to get a better picture on the 1st of January, but looking at our results from August, signs are not looking good. Oh, we've had just two wins in this first half of the season, and we have some serious work to do. We are nine points from safety. Oh, this is not a good spot, man. This is not a good spot. Already, Andre Ayew has gone down two overall. I think we might need to go in for another striker. But striker is not the only position I am interested in upgrading as we have signed a new send midfielder here in Gustavo Heimer from Coventry. A new center back in Christian Burgess. And we finally get ourselves a new striker. It is Victor Boniface who we are signed here from the same club as Burgess, Union St. Goliath, the Nigerian, hopefully a lot of pressure on his shoulders by the six foot four Nigerian. Hopefully he can bang in some goals and take the Premier League by storm. Well, that didn't go well. That did not go to plan. We have been relegated and we finished last in the Premier League. Last in the Premier League, four wins and we are headed back down to the championship with Luton Town. Meanwhile, at the top of the table, Man City have won the league. Fair play though to Sheffield United and Burnley, the two teams we came up with finishing mid-table whilst we finish last. Arsenal have won the FA Cup. West Ham stopped Tottenham from winning a trophy. Barcelona stopped Tottenham from winning another trophy. But we are so far from even having to worry about European football. Nice and Dortmund winning their respective competitions. You can't expect to survive relegation when nobody in your team gets double digits in the goal department. Big 
big credit though to Gustavo Hammer, who got five goals in half a season. We are going to be letting a vast array of players leave on free transfers, however. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen, back down to the championship, trying to get ourselves right back up. Season two is going to begin with an improvement to our back line here. It's going to be Austin Trusty, the American defender, joining us here from Arsenal. I wanted to get players that will fit into our squad perfectly, that can't get a start at bigger clubs and turn them into stars. Trusty is someone I've identified as being like that. And somebody else that fits that mold is the Welsh former wonder kid, Ethan Mpadu from Chelsea. We're going to bring him permanently to Luton Town for four and a half mil. But I really want this season here to be one of a clean out. And the first player departure of the season is actually going to be a loan. Another move here, which is a loan for Joe Taylor. Colton Morris is the first man to be permanently packing his bags this season as the Englishman is off to Anderlecht. I don't plan on playing a formation with left midfielders or right midfielders this season, so it makes sense for us to say goodbye to Carlos Mendes Gomez. He didn't play last year, and he definitely wasn't going to play this year, which is why we are saying goodbye to Jordan Clark. Bringing in Christian Burgess last year was definitely a bit of a Hail Mary. He's been here for six months. It hasn't worked, so we've decided to ship him off. It's certainly been a lot tamer of a window than what we had last year, but we've got a pretty decent core to our squad here here and I'm really hoping that we can get ourselves back up to the Premier League with Luton Town. Here we are on the 1st of January and we're in a very strong position but this is a very tight promotion battle as it always seems to be in the championship so I still think we have some work to do here in January to get us over the line and hopefully back up. And ultimately, I think the best course of action is to upgrade at the right back spot, which is why we sign Isaiah Jones from Middlesbrough. In this save, Middlesbrough are currently mid-table in the championship, and I think this guy is too good to be in a 12th place team. I think he should be coming to the top, and the top is where he's at. Nah, you're actually kidding. We have fallen out of automatic promotion by one point, and we're gonna have to battle it out with Norwich, Bournemouth, and Southampton in the playoffs. Preston have done it alongside Fulham, and the clubs getting relegated are going to be Derby, Huddersfield, and Ipswich. Man City have won the FA Cup. Arsenal win the Carabao Cup. Oh, we have had an insane second leg in the semi-finals against Southampton and have beaten them 5-3 on aggregate, which means we're taking on the Canaries in the promotion playoff final to get back in the Premier League, which is what we do. We take down Norwich and we have been promoted back to the Premier League. Oh, that is such a relief. And a much better season here from our players. 22 goals for the Nigerian striker, Victor Boniface, who is going to get himself up to a 79 overall. Great season for Gustavo. Adebayo with a good year. Even Corley Woodrow, former Fulham player, off the bench. But there are going to be three players who will not be joining us next year for our second stint in the Premier League. They're going to be Andre Ayu, who is retiring. And then I'm just going to be letting Shay and Matt May walk on freeze. But we are back to the Premier League. Let's actually stay there this time with Luton Town. I truly think we need to make some big name signings this year, getting players across that are going to help us survive comfortably. I don't want to be in the relegation dogfight. Eddie and Kedia is stuck behind Jesus in Arsenal in this save. So we're going to offer him a way out and a way to be a star player here at the club. 20.4 million pounds to Mikel Arteta. They want 21.6 and I am okay with that. We're going to accept that transfer offer. And there it is, lads. We've got it across. I am absolutely over the moon. I really want to make Nketiah live up to his potential. He's lagging a little bit. He's 25 years of age now, so it is time for him to step up. Eddie and Kedia, welcome to Luton Town. I am looking to change up the formation a little bit though this season, which is why we're making the sad call to say goodbye to Marvelous Nakamba, who we have sold here to Pisa. And annoyingly, he's gone up one overall in the day that I've sold him. Of course, whatever, we'll get over it. But we are heading down to the championship and we're going to sign Carlos Alcaraz here. I want to move our formation from having a defensive midfielder to an attacking midfielder. Alcaraz is stuck in the championship 
and I really want to get this kid up to his full potential, so we're going to sign him from the Saints. Going to send Cody Drame back to Leeds United, but it's just on a loan. Get him some game time and hopefully some growth. He's just returned from a two-year loan spell, but we're sending Lily Watson back on loan again. A solid upgrade, though, to the back line here. We're, I think this is the first player that I've signed outside of the English leagues that wasn't already rumored with Luton Town. It is Ko Itakura, the Japanese center half, is joining us from Borussia Mönchengladbach. This is going to be a really interesting season, though. We need to survive relegation. We cannot afford another trip down to the championship. If we get relegated again, then I might have no other choice than to step down as Luton Town manager. But lads, if you are enjoying this Luton Town realistic rebuild and you want to see more of these on the channel, then make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. We are so close. 20,000 subscribers away from half a million. Help us get there if you haven't already. Oh, uh, what? I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so, what? What? I have no other words right now than what? We are coming third right now. We are coming third. Who the hell? What is going on right now? Have, are we sure the CPU hasn't got us in Newcastle confused? We are third halfway through this Premier League season. I can, I can live with that. We are going to make a player sale here though. Luke Berry, who I've been trying to sell for three seasons, finally goes, finally goes, and he's off to Bazixia. Ironically, I could go in and sign him on a free contract for free, but I'm not going to be a scumbag. That wouldn't be very realistic. So I've just realized we only have one goalkeeper in our squad right now which is why we're going to break the bank right now in signing the French goalkeeper, Stefan Bayic from Bristol City. Ah, uh, goddamn lads. We dropped off in the second half of the season. You know what? I'm okay with it. I don't care. I have wanted to avoid relegation. We end up finishing eighth. That is a, that is a massive success. Of course, the allure of European football makes me feel a little bit upset, but it is what it is. We know that we can get ourselves up there and in a strong position for season four. Who got relegated? Newcastle got out of the battle and the relegated sides are Wolves, Fulham and Preston. Hopefully they have some decent players that we can go in and steal next year. Liverpool did take down Burnley to win the FA Cup. Man City beat Leeds to win the Carabao. PSG are European champions. Borussia Dortmund, that's the second Europa League they have won in this video. And Tottenham, Tottenham have lost three trophies in this video so far. The meme just keeps on coming back, doesn't it, lads? Also, I don't think we're in the Conference League next year, but I think there's like a minute possibility. Not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed with Eddie and Kedia. Only six goals this year, but Boniface had an insane year in terms of like what we're used to. 11 goals, three assists, 10 and four for Hammer, who continues to be an absolute stud. And some more player departures as Dan Potts, Glenn Ray, and Luke Freeman are all gone. We have found ourselves a young, English goalkeeper that's out at Rayo Vallecano. It's time to get him back to his home nation, back to the Premier League, and turn him into a superstar. It is Aaron Forrest. As you can see there, he has a release clause of 30.4 million pounds, which we are gonna activate to bring him to Luton. Another transfer that takes no brains to make. I saw that when Wolverhampton got relegated, they had Renan Lodi on their side. We had to go in for him. We had to. It's a cut price deal as we get the Brazilian left back across from Wolverhampton. And that means it is time to go for Mark Travers bringing in a new goalkeeper. He's done a solid, but he's now off to Fiorentina for 16 and a half mil. And I echo the same sentiment for Jamal Lascelles, who's headed to Cagliari, one of our first signings but all good things must come to an end. Another man out of the club, Reese Burke off to Fenerbahce. But we've got to be pushing now. We knew last season we got eighth. We need to have the goal of pushing for European football of some sort next year. Now, this team, there's room to improve, but we're going to see how the first half of the season goes because I will guarantee you one thing. I am going to be upgrading somewhere in the back line. We need to make some moves, lads. We're sitting ninth, but we have got some real work to do if we want to get ourselves up into European football because we are closer to the relegation zone right now than we are the top four. And I hate to say it, but Ko Itakura is the man that I'm going to add to the transfer list. He's 28 years of age, he's not growing, and his form is bad. So we need to sell him and make a massive upgrade. Death 
taxes and Louis Watson being loaned out. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Ko Itakura is officially no longer a Luton Town player. We've sent him to Naples here and we've got 21.2 million pounds back in the process. I promise I'm trying to not only sign players from Wolves, but they just had such a good side. They had Benoit Battishelli. This dude is a beast. This dude is a stud. How did they get him? Regardless though, he's now a Luton Town player. I'm very glad that Wolverhampton signed him because that meant that that's a somewhat realistic transfer for us. We've brought him back up to the Prem and made our side 10 times stronger in the process. Oh, it's a three-way tie. It's a three-way tie in eighth, but we have finished in 10th position here. We've established ourselves as a mid-table club now, but I want to be where the likes of Man United, Liverpool, even Chelsea are. All right, who got bottom of the table? Who got relegated? Leeds, Forest, and Brentford. Newcastle did win the FA Cup where we made it to the semi-finals. We made it to the semi-finals. We could have been playing Europa League football if we'd gone and bloody won it, but we lost in the semis. Where unfortunately we lost in the quarterfinals. We're getting so close. RB Leipzig have won the Champions League. Bayern Munich win a star-studded Europa League final. And it is gonna be Sporting winning the Conference League. Victor, the Inflictor, is just an absolute stud. 85 rated, 18 goals. He has been carrying us, absolutely carrying us in this rebuild. And like most seasons, we're gonna have a couple of players departing the club. Corley Woodrow, Musque, and Elliot Thorpe all gone. But next year, we're going balls to the wall, trying to push ourselves into European football. We have beaten out RC Lens to get ourselves a new starting center half. It is Malik Fior. He was at Brentford, they got relegated, and he wanted a path back to the top flight, so we signed the German. He was one of our first signings, but unfortunately, it just has worked out this way. James Justin, no longer a Luton Town player. He departs the club for the second time in his career, and is going to go link up with Itakura at Napoli. I've stumbled upon this kid, Jamie Tomlinson at Borussia Dortmund, and I desperately want him in the club. He's English, and he would be an amazing pickup for the side. They want Trusty, though. Trusty, I have moved out of the starting 11, but I still want him as a backup option. I'm going to hit them with 39-1 again. Come on, Dortmund. Do us solid. They want 45. I can deal with that. 40.5 million pounds to Tomlinson. Get in there, lads. We continue to build up the English core of our squad as Jamie Tomlinson is going to join us here from Borussia Dortmund. This kid looks like he is an absolute stud, and I'm glad we can give him an opportunity in the Premier League. Just because we're building out a really good squad doesn't mean I don't want to continue loaning players out and growing them behind the scenes, which is why we're sending the Canadian striker Pepple off to LAFC for the season. We need to have an all-time season though, lads. I really want us to get ourselves into European football. We've got a balanced team here at Luton Town, but the question is, can we live up to the expectations we've placed on ourselves. I am sick of being a mid-table team. So let's get out of that category. Watch us go and get in the relegation battle. Oh my God, we're 11th. We're 11th on 31 points. Although it's not all doom and gloom because as we scroll up the table, one win and we could find ourselves in a Europa League spot. So we just need to have a really good second half of the season here. But again, I want to reiterate, I am so sick of mid-table. Oh, that hurts. Look how congested this... Oh, this final day would have been insane. We have finished sixth, and there could have been third through to ninth. Could have swapped places. We are going to be playing Conference League or Europa League next year. But one less draw or one less loss, and we would have been in the Champions League. Man City were clear of that mess, and so were Chelsea. But scrolling down the table, please be a big club getting relegated. It's Palace, Bournemouth, and Fulham have had one of the worst seasons ever. But we won the FA Cup! Get in there! I mean, I still think we're going to be playing Europa League regardless, but we have won some silverware. We have won the FA Cup. Didn't win the Carabao Cup, though. That goes to Chelsea. The Champions League goes to Barcelona. Dortmund just stay winning Europa Leagues. And it is Atalanta winning the Conference League. 20 goals for Victor Boniface here, the Nigerian nightmare himself. 
He has scored 20 goals. You love to see it. Up to an 88. And Kedi up to an 87. The lads are growing quite nicely. And that's a decent debut season there for Jamie Tomlinson. Well, we are saying goodbye to a few more players. Most notably is Mpanzu. He's been on the ride with Luton Town, but he is officially retiring from football. Thank you for your service, mate. I want European glory so bad this year, lads. Which is why we're going to spend over 50 million pounds getting a center half who is ready to deliver us European glory this year. It is Mickey van de Ven. We've brought him across from RC Lens. And I'm so excited to see what he can do in this squad. Six foot four of pure Dutch talent. And it wouldn't be a realistic rebuild without signing a player from a relegated side. Being in the Europa League this year means we're going to have a lot more fixtures on our calendar. So I've decided to bolster the bench and sign Everechi Eze from Crystal Palace for just over 20 million pounds. In my honest opinion, I think that if we were in the Champions League this year, we would give it a real red hot crack, but we're in the Europa League. We need to get ourselves in the Champions League for next year. And I genuinely think we can win the Europa League here in season six with Luton Town. Our Europa League group is the definition of balanced. We do not have an easy fixture in this group. We've got Galatasaray, Copenhagen, and Hearts. Interested to see how we go, but we just need to get ourselves Champions League footy. Let's check in on the 1st of January. Just like last year, it's going to be a battle for the top four spots. Right now, we're battling it out with United, West Ham, Newcastle, Arsenal. There is a smorgasbord of talent fighting for this Champions League spot. And right now, we are outside of the mix. How are we doing in the Europa League? We came second in our group. That is not a great sign. And we're in the preliminary rounds against Lazio. Burnley in there as well. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We are finished Third in the Premier League again. Look at the table. 71 points for first place Chelsea. Two points behind them. Fifth place United. This could have gone anywhere. But we're smack bang in the middle. And we are playing Champions League football next season. Scrolling down the table, the relegated side. It's not a great year for Liverpool, but it's Leeds, Brentford, and Southampton. Unfortunately, we lost the Community Shield at the start of the season to City. Tottenham have won the FA Cup. They actually beat us in the semi-finals. We could have gone back to back. Oh, Tottenham, what have we done? We've, been, we've created a monster. Tottenham have won the Carabao Cup. We were nowhere near it. Champions League winners are Manchester City. We did not win the Europa League final. We actually got eliminated 4-2 in the preliminary round against Lazio, which that doesn't fill me with much confidence moving forward. But only actually made it to the semi-finals though, which is wild. Eddie and Ketia, welcome. He's kind of been number two for the whole video, but Eddie and Kedia has had a career best season here and has got himself 29 goals and 10 assists. That's not to take away from Victor Boniface. He had a great season as well, but Eddie and Kedia, that is a campaign to remember, my friend. It's almost becoming routine at this point, but again, we are saying goodbye to a few players. I ended up re-signing John McAdee for an extra season last year but now we're letting him go. But the big one is going to be Tom Lockyer, the former captain of Luton Town, the man that went to hospital on the day they won the promotion final. He is retiring. Tom Lockyer, thank you and goodbye. But we have got Champions League football next year, and I think we're a great chance of having a good crack. Let's get into it. I feel like I have signed so many center backs in this video, but we're going to add another one to the list. I mean, it makes sense when playing a five at the back formation. But ladies and gentlemen, this one is the biggest of them all. It is going to be the Frenchman, William Saliba, who is going to be joining us here from RB Leipzig. We do have just too many center backs in the squad, though. So we're going to say goodbye to one of them. It is the American, Austin Trusty, who is off to Al Muriel. We get 22 million pounds back for him. I've got one eye on the now and one eye on the future, which is why we are splashing the cash on a backup striker. It is Eden Kovacevic, 
Bosnian striker, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say it's Edin Dzeko's regen. This dude, quality off the bench right now. Eddie Nketi is not getting any younger. He's about to hit 30. So I've kind of started to put the plans into place for a potential succession plan. You can't tell me this team isn't naughty, man. This team is incredible. And if you don't agree then you are a liar. You're a liar if you don't think, or you're just deluded if you don't think this team is sick. I am so excited to see what we can do this year, man. First Champions League campaign. We've got to find ourselves right in the thick of the favorites. Just like our Europa League group last year, there is no wins in this Champions League group. We're in Group H. We've got Napoli, Valencia, and Lech Poznan from Poland. We're going to have to be on our A game. We're really going to see whether we're a contender or a pretender. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. We have topped our Champions League group here. Three points ahead of Valencia. 15 points for us. Lek Poznan. Thanks for making up the numbers. But our round of 16 adventure begins against Leverkusen. It's a challenge to kick things off, but hopefully we continue our good form. Oh, we might have had good form in the Champions League, but it looks like we used all of it up because we... Are having a stinker in the Premier League right now. 30 points and we're sitting in eight. Nah, that is pathetic. Something in my gut is telling me, Jared, go in for a backup goalkeeper. Right now, I'm backup goalkeeper is 75 rated. If something happens, we will be screwed, which is why we have elected to sign the 32-year-old, 83 overall, Alexander Nubel from Chelsea. All right, lads, here goes nothing. Champions League knockout round time. We have put almost all of our eggs into one basket. Our team is primed and designed to be a competitor this season. Is it going to fire back on us? Oh, and Kedia in the first leg has brought us from behind and we take the advantage back to London. We've got the advantage, lads. Let's keep it that way. Second leg at home here at Kenilworth Road, the smallest stadium. Did you know their stadium leads to someone's backyard? But we win it 2-1. Jones and Enkedia, 4-2 on aggregate. We're through to the next round. Quarterfinals, here we go. We're staying in Germany, but my God, things just got real. Bayern Munich here in the quarterfinals. Why couldn't we get Galatasaray or Salzburg? God damn it. Here goes nothing though, lads. We have a full strength starting 11 coming into this first leg here at home. Oh, I really want to take a strong... I really want to take a lead to Germany with us. They've got a good team, Bayern Munich. I was just admiring it there for a second. But it is Eddie and Kedia giving us the lead. Alcaraz and Enkedia helping us come from behind once again in the first leg. I'm starting to notice a bit of a trend. And I mean, if that trend gets us to a Champions League title, then let it continue. Oh, here we go. We're at the Allianz Arena. We're traveling to Munich. We've got Bayern Munich. Boniface is up to a 94 overall. Come on, mate. Score some goals for us. <gasps> we win it on pens. No, that is a crazy game. We have won it on pens. They scored in the 86th. No, that is a crazy game. 4-3. And we win it on a penalty shootout. Talk about a heart stopper. I think I've gone into cardiac arrest. Salzburg's run continues. They've got Barcelona, but more importantly, we need to focus on ourselves. It's an all English affair. It's not an easy one. Not an easy one by any stretch of the imagination. It's Man City. Be for gods, please be kind to us. We're trying to continue the trend of 2-1 wins in a first leg. We're on the road this time. They've got a sick team, Haaland in his prime, who's gonna get it done. Oh, it's a two-all draw. Jack Grealish getting the goal in the 83rd minute to tie this one up, but it is all still to fight for. But that is a massive blow for the second leg. Saliba has been suspended. We need to dig deep, ladies and gentlemen. Ethan and Pardu is in for the suspended Saliba. It all hangs in the balance. Two all. A spot in a Champions League final on the line. And we're going to do it in the 79th minute. Boniface, Boniface, however you pronounce it. I don't care. All I care about is that we are facing either Barca or insanely Salzburg in a Champions League 
final. Oh my, yeah, it's gonna be Barcelona. They thumped Salzburg. Taking a look around the grounds at the other competitions. Fiorentina with a big result there against Real Madrid. PSV have won the Conference League. We have had a much improved second half of the season, but my God, did those draws kill us? 15 draws and just six losses. And this game becomes massive because if we don't win tonight, we're not playing Champions League footy next year. Scrolling down the table, the relegated sides, Palace, Sheffield United, Fulham have been dreadful in this video. Aston Villa have won the FA Cup. <laughs> okay, West Ham winning the Carabao Cup. Cool. I want to pay more attention to Bradford City in the final. Fair play. That would have been a Cinderella story. What a season from Victor Boniface. He gets 39 goals and 11 assists. That would surely put the Nigerian strike into Ballon d'Or contention. Surely. I cannot wait to use him and all of our other players in this Champions League final. Tomlinson's a stud. Oh my God. It is time though, ladies and gentlemen, the Champions League final. Let's get into it. An early corner here for Barcelona. They've come out so fast. Get that one away. Good header. Lottie trying to skill his way. He does pass his Larson fella. Renan Lottie. Back post. or oh, falls nicely though. Win that one. He's onside. He's onside because the defender kept him onside. And it's the Nigerian nightmare. Victor Boniface. That is goal number 40 of the season for him. And he gives us the lead in the Champions League final. Frankie de Jong. Barca have really turned it on since we got that goal. They play that one through there. They lay it off. Do not let him get a shot. Just defend. Just defend. Blocked. Oh my God. That's gone through like five different people. They've got the shot and they've got the equalizer. I don't know what's just happened there. The camera's gone wild, but Barcelona have scored a weird equalizer. I can't say they don't deserve it though. They have been so good Barcelona since we scored the go-ahead goal. Kedia feeding it. That's a great ball. Can we get ourselves nope. in the lead again? No, it's straight at Stegen, but we're going to get a corner. Free haul to Jones. Jones, nice footy being played here. And Kedia to Jones. Get it through early. He's offside, isn't he? Bloody hell, we would have had a sweaty goal opportunity. Alcaraz to swing this one in here. We've got the corner. Alcaraz, get onto it. Bonifarte, win that Dewsbury Hall. Almada, they go through here. Get something in front of it. What a save from Forrest. Please, not like this. Don't do it in the 92nd minute. Just make a tackle, lads. They Or they can pass it back. That's fine by me. But we're off to extra time. Dewsbury Hall, we've got a bit of space out there on the left. Renan Lodi, trying to take it in here. I'm just going to put this one in here. Get a header. Dewsbury Hall, get to it. Alcaraz, good back heel pass there to Renan Lodi. In, play it, shoot it. Oh, I press B. Why are we taking a touch? Come on, lads. Counter attack. Boniface putting that one out here. Play it through. Nice. Get hold it. Get it through. Oh, play it now. Alcaraz. Alcaraz. Alcaraz is going to score it. 118. Carlos Alcaraz may have just won us a Champions League title with Luton Town. What a counter attack. Not gonna lie, I thought we stuffed that up on multiple occasions. We've put it wide, but it doesn't matter because we have won a Champions League title with Luton Town. Oh my God. What an insane game. He was our first signing when we took over as Luton Gaffer. And it's going to be Dewsbury Hall to officially signify the completion of the Luton Town Realistic Rebuild. Lads, if you enjoyed today's rebuild, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.